So remember, the original system of equations that we were working with looked like this. Um, sorry about all the shuffling there. We have uh, x1 prime equals negative 7x1 uh, plus 8x2. And x2 prime equals negative 4x1 um, plus 5x2. And we said that that was equivalent to this matrix equation. So we had um, x1 prime, x2 prime equals a, so negative 7x1. Um, let's see, I'm sorry. The, the a vector or a matrix is just negative 7, 8, negative 4, 5 times the vector x1, x2. And when we got our solution, our solution was that x, which is x1, x2, looked like d1 times 1, 1, e to the lambda t, or 1t in this case, plus d2 times 2, 1, e to the minus 3t. So let's, let's check this solution by computing um, the x prime vector and a times x. So let's do a times x first. Um, so ax is equal to the matrix A, and I'm just going to write this, times uh, d1, 1, 1, e to the t, plus d2 times 2, 1, e to the minus 3t. But um, due to properties of, of matrix multiplication, uh, the d1 and the e1, or the e to the t, and the d2 and the e to the minus 3t are all scalars. So uh, the, the matrix A, we can simply distribute it, so to speak, and have it multiply the vectors 1, 1, and 2, 1, and put those results in um, times the scalars that are there. So when we do that, um, a times 1, 1, uh, let's see, let's do that off to the side. So we've got um, negative 7, 8, negative 4, 5 times 1, 1 equals, so when we multiply the uh, first row of the matrix, when we dot, dot it with the vector, we get 1. And same thing when we do the second row. So we get 1, 1. And if we take negative 7, 8, negative 4, 5, and we multiply it by the vector 2, 1, we get the vector um, looks like negative 14 plus 8, so negative 6, and then negative 8 plus 5, so negative 3. Okay, so the result of this, A times X, turns out to be D1, times 1, 1, e to the t, plus d2, times negative 6, negative 3, e to the minus 3t. And you can see that we can take uh, a scalar of negative 3 out of that um, second vector. And so we get d1 times 1, 1 e to the t minus 3 d2 times 2, 1 e to the minus 3t. So that's a times x. Now remember, at this point, you may be a little lost as to what we're doing. Remember, we're trying to check our solution. We're trying to see if, if a times x um, actually equals um, the derivative. So what we just computed is this part that I'm just indicating right here with a star. In fact, let me indicate it down here also. So that's the red star in both places. So now what we need to do is find the derivative of x 
um, and see if it equals that red star. So x prime um, equals the derivative of x1 and the derivative of x2. Okay, but we can simply take the derivative of the only part that has our, our variable in there, that's the e part. So let me just write like, let me write like this, d1, 1, 1, e to the t, plus d2, 2, 1, uh, e to the minus 3t. And let me indicate with a prime that we're doing the derivative of that. And the only variable is t. The d1 times 1, 1 is, is a constant. It's a constant vector. And the d2 times 2, 1 is a constant vector. So the derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. So this first part just comes out d1 uh, times 1, 1 e to the t. And then the second part, by the chain rule, we're going to get a minus 3 factor. So we'll have minus 3 d2 times 2, 1 e to the minus 3t. And you can see that this whole thing here, which I'll call a blue double star, um, happens to be equal to the red star. And remember, the red star was a times x, a times the vector x, and the blue double star was x prime. So what we've shown is that ax equals x prime, which was our original uh, differential equation, equation we were trying to solve. So we've just verified our solution.